Let's take a look at intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is a large part of what people of faith engage in. During most church services, time is set aside to pray for people in that particular community who are in need, or to offer prayer concerning some situation in the world. It's an important part of caring for others within the community. There is also, of course, time spent in private praying for people, or even time spent with the people themselves praying for them. I understand very well, I think, the psychology of this. A natural response to the suffering of others is to project goodwill towards them. It's a sign of empathy. I think, though, that praying in this way is intended to be a bit more than just wishing people well. I can offer well wishes to people without actually praying for them. When I pray in this way, I'm interceding, hence intercessory prayer, on behalf of someone with God. So I think it's fair to ask the question of people of faith who pray in this way, what exactly are you doing or, or think you're doing? What do you expect or hope will happen when you pray to God for someone? Well, let's think about the possibilities. Let's think about the options. As an example, let's consider praying for someone who is seriously ill, perhaps with cancer. Unfortunately, this is quite a common occurrence. I think it's fair to say, to begin with, that when people pray, they expect something to happen that would not otherwise happen. Otherwise, why do it? Sometimes I think this verges on magic, on magical thinking, if we think somehow our words are going to have some direct influence on events. But I don't think it has to be that way. Since we're directing our prayers towards God, supposedly, I assume that we're asking God to intervene in some way, to provide healing, for example. We assume that God can heal the person's illness. Will he not do this if we don't pray for them? Is prayer about changing God's mind, getting him to do something he wouldn't otherwise do? Intervening directly by repairing the person's body in some way. I'm uncomfortable with this whole idea of an interventionist God, as I've expressed before. I remember a long time ago reading a kind of Christian testimony, a kind of Bi biography where the author described taking the family on a picnic and it started to rain and they prayed together for the rain to stop and lo and behold it stopped raining on them although it continued to rain on all the people having picnics around them. I hope that most Christians would think that story is as ridiculous as I do. First of all, what an incredibly trivial thing to pray for. And secondly, do people really think that God intervenes in the world in that way to change the laws of nature for a moment, even if it's only one little point of creation? Now, I know that praying for someone to be healed of cancer is in no way a trivial matter, but it still requires that same kind of thinking that God is going to intervene to change something, to make something happen that would not otherwise happen. I wonder, would the science of medicine ever progress if you didn't know whether the person recovered because of the treatment you gave them or because God intervened? Not only does this mess with the way the world works and mess with the way we would do science, but in this case, in the case of healing someone, it also raises questions about why God needs to be prayed to before he will act, and why he acts in some situations apparently and not others. There are a couple of things to observe about this. First of all, many people recover from cancer following medical intervention, and perhaps some even recover without this. So if the person recovers, do we attribute that to God? What if they recover without prayer? And what of those who don't recover despite all our prayers? It's fairly clear that you can't provide any causal link between prayer and healing, or lack of healing. The evidence just isn't there. One of the slightly 
dishonest things about this kind of prayer is that we have these kind of built-in safeguards for when our prayers are not answered. For one thing, prayers are often prefaced with a kind of escape clause, if it be thy will. So we're covering all bases with this. I think the other slightly dishonest thing is that we're inclined to say that whatever the outcome actually is, God has in fact answered our prayers. We might say, at least she didn't suffer for long, or at least now he's with God. So whatever happens, we decide that's going to be the answer to our prayer. I think we, we hedge prayer with all these safety nets because we probably know deep down that our prayer actually does nothing in this sense, in the sense of contributing directly to the healing of that person or by having some kind of effect on God's will. So we make sure to cover all bases, all possibilities. Of course, if we pray and the person is healed, we may be inclined to claim that God has answered our prayers with a little more conviction than the situation actually warrants. Perhaps, though, when we pray, what we're actually doing is sending positive thoughts toward the person, hoping to influence their state of mind, which may well contribute towards their recovery or at least give them the strength to cope with whatever the outcome might be. I can understand how this might work if the person knows that others are praying for them. This is not some kind of magical mental action at a distance by us. Knowing that other people are thinking of them, wishing them well, standing alongside them, can only be beneficial. I don't think this is so very different from simply telling and showing the person that you care for them, that you're there for them. Understanding the effectiveness of prayer in this way doesn't require any action from God. It doesn't require any God at all. Though no doubt some people do acquire strength from believing that God is alongside them in their time of need and suffering. I have no doubt that this can have a positive psychological effect. Perhaps the other thing that we're doing when we pray for someone in this way is changing ourselves putting ourselves in a frame of mind that will enable us to be there for the other person. Perhaps it even prompts us into taking action in addition to just praying. I have no doubt that by making someone else the focus of our thoughts, whether that's in the form of prayer or some kind of meditation or reflection, this can create in us a much more empathetic attitude towards the person. It changes our state of mind. Now, I think the first way of understanding intercessory prayer, this intervention by God, is problematic on many levels. I am, however, reasonably comfortable with the second and third understanding of what prayer might be, although maybe the intercessory element is absent in those cases. There's one more understanding of intercessory prayer that I'd like to discuss, and it makes me very uncomfortable. I think what I've been discussing so far doesn't take me very far from the world as I understand it, even when it includes the idea of a God who may or may not intervene. At least in that context, the people involved generally believe in science and medicine. They may be looking for assistance beyond this, but they're not ignorant of it or denying it. But there is an understanding of the world that I find totally abhorrent and intercessory prayer in this context makes me sick. That is a world which is perceived as full of demons and evil spirits, and that these are the things that cause illness and disease. We've all seen televangelists and other evangelical ministers praying for people who are sick. Usually this involves violently laying hands on them, sometimes screaming at them, and almost invariably involves casting out some imaginary demon, which is the cause of this person's illness. This is a dangerous and abhorrent practice and causes nothing but harm. It's hateful and disgusting. By turning illness and disease into some aspect of spiritual warfare, they've made it into something even worse than it actually is. If that's what someone understands by the term intercessory prayer, 
Well, this worldview is something from the Dark Ages. To call it medieval is probably an insult to people from the Middle Ages. I understand the very human instinct to pray, either for ourselves or others, when we're confronted with suffering. I understand the need to look beyond ourselves, beyond the world, for some kind of assistance. But prayer can also be a way of expressing empathy and solidarity with the sufferer, or strengthening ourselves in the face of their suffering or our own suffering. I prefer not to bring God into it, though. That just muddies the waters. As for those who are surrounded by demons, I hope they enjoy the fruits of the world they've created for themselves.